Yo, what's going cool, on? In today's video, I got the how to make, um, or how to use ray casting to make abilities, and skills, and whatnot. Just generally how to use ray casting, but but the focus is how to use it to make abilities and skills. Um, thank you guys for all the love and support you guys been showing. I really do appreciate it. I'm almost I'm halfway to seven thousand subscribers. Really do appreciate it. Hope you guys been enjoying all the videos I've been dropping and whatnot and stuff. Uh, thank you to everyone who's joined the Discord server. I'm halfway to 3,000 server members and stuff. I swear, I feel like I'm getting my Discord server is going to quick catch up to my sub count. I really do feel like it. But any anyway, what's up to everyone watching the premiere right now? Let's go ahead and get straight into the video. Okay, so first things first, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you may not know what raycasting is exactly. So raycasting is simply, um, to give you a, de a definition, it's pretty much calculating a distance between two, two different objects, right? Like the diff like if I had two parts and I wanted to see how far away is part one from part two, then I would then I would use ray casting. I would cast a ray from. Oh, sorry, let me do that. I would use a, I would use ray casting to cast a ray like an invisible ray. Obviously, you wouldn't be able to see it, but I would use it to cast a ray, right? That stretches from this part's position all the way to this part's position, and then I'd be able to get the distance from that. You know, that's pretty much what ray casting is. To give it some practical, give an example of its practical use. Um, guns, yeah, like when you because. Most people, 99% of people who've played Roblox, they've played some type of shooting game in Roblox and stuff, yeah. All guns use ray casting and stuff, that's how people uh, make the bullets travel in certain directions, trajectory and all that. Uh, determine the speed and whatnot, I'm going to show you guys how to do all that, but yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and straight into the video. So yeah, I won't be covering anything necessarily, I won't be going too deep into anything specific, like here's how to make a full gun system, here's how to make a full combat, no, I have videos for that. This is just a general overview of how to use ray casting to achieve those abilities and explain ray casting to people who don't know how to use it okay so first things first right let's go ahead we're obviously gonna need a rig to test this stuff on right so let's click avatar let's click rig builder and let's insert a block avatar let's throw that down there right so then i want to open up or no let's insert our mode event into replicated storage let's knock this out first insert our mode event into replicated storage right and then rename set a mode event com okay i didn't realize i'll catch on rename set remote event combat event right if i knew how to spell okay and then we're gonna go ahead and open up starter player insert a local script into starter player scripts right then we are going to rename the script to combat script in a parentheses put local right then you can delete print hello world we can get the user input service first let's say local uis is equal to game get service in quotation marks user input service then for our second variable we're gonna get the combat remote event so let's say local combat event is equal to game the replicated storage rate for child combat event then let's say uis let's set the function so we're going to say uis that input began connect function right in parentheses put input comma process enter right then you're going to say if input dot user input type is equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard and not processed which pretty much means that the player is not typing in chat enter then we're going to say if input dot key code is equal to enum dot key code you guys know i always go with the e key bond but you guys can go whatever you want you don't even have to use the key bind you could use like the left mouse button i'm just doing it because usually this is the key bind for ability usually like people you know abilities usually activated you know via key binds and whatnot so then we're going to fire the remote event we're going to say combat event fire server in quotation marks we're going we're just going to put a ray cast just a simple name for the event then i'm going to insert a server script into server script service and then i'm going to rename this script to combat script and in parentheses put server here's where we'll actually do the ray casting and handle all that so first things first, let's get the combat remote event. We could just really copy and paste that and save ourselves the time from the local script. And then we're going to say combat event on server events, connect function and parentheses, put PLRs are for the player, comma event type, and then enter, right? Then we're going to get a, we're going to create a variable for the player's character. So local character is equal to player dot character. Set up the if statement with the event type. So we're going to say if event type is equal to in quotation marks, ray cast, then enter, right? So, okay. You need three things, right, to cast a ray or to ray cast, whatever way you want to put it. You need three things. You need a starting position, the direction, and then the ray cast parameters, right? Now, parameters, um, I'll be referring to parameters as params. Params is just short for parameters and stuff, right? So, start position, that's pretty self explanatory. Where, where you're starting, okay, right? So, let's say I have an attack, right? Let's say I have it where, like, it shoot, I don't know, it shoots some, 
or no, let's do shooting after. Okay, so let's say I'm making like a punch attack, right? And I'm using ray casting, right? Now, usually you would have like, you would usually combine ray casting with hitboxes, but we're not going to do all that. So we're just going to use ray casting. So let's say I wanted to make like a punch attack, right? Like if a player is like, if I cast a ray from my player's human or root part, right? To say like five studs in front of me. If it detects that there's an NPC or player like within the distance, well, five studs within five studs of me, then the attack is going to you know follow through. If they're obviously further than five studs, it's not going to work, right? So let's say I had an attack with that. So our starting position, of course, will be where we want the attack, where we want the raid to start from. So we would want to get the position of our character's human root part. So let's say local start position, create a variable for the start position, right? is equal to character dot humanoid root part dot position now you can use look look vectors and stuff it just has to be a vector three coordinate it can't be like c frames and stuff like that so then we need to get our direction right so let's say local direction is equal to character dot humanoid right humanoid root part i'm about to explain something to you guys we're going to say dot c frame but we're going to say uh, look vector because that's a vector three coordinate okay <clears throat> so i'm gonna explain how this can be done right so by setting it up like this right keep in mind this it, this will mean will mean that the ray is casted you know from the human root part and it'll be whatever direction your player or your character is facing right so it's not going to be where your mouse is it's going to be whatever direction your character is facing like th whatever direction they're looking at right so say if you wanted it to be mouse guided what you would want to do is get the mouse position from the client side so you would create a variable for the local player you would do game dot players dot local player you would include the player's mouse position so you say player get mouse dot hit dot position you would send that over create a variable over here for argument one then you would create then you would uh instead of direction you wouldn't need direction you would just need start position and then so i'm just going to gray that out and stuff right don't actually delete that but so you would say local end position is equal to arg1 which is the mouse position and stuff because that's where you want it to end wherever the mouse is right so that's how you would do it if you were making like a type of attack like mouse guided like if you were making you know something with guns a laser gun something like that yes just something a mouse guided attack that's how you would do it with that and then of course you know you would add a tween and all that stuff right so yeah, well we obviously don't need that i just wanted to explain that just in case anybody was wondering about that so so like i was saying it's going to be a punch it's going to be like well just imagine like i'm not going to get an animation or anything but just imagine it's punch based right so we have our start position in our direction the direct we have where we want to start and the direction is going to the direction we want it to go in lastly we need raycast parameters if you don't know what parameters means it wouldn't surprise me most of y'all are children but anyway um parameters is pretty much just like a set of requirements like which like you can like i want it to do this but i don't want it I don't want it to do that if that kind of makes sense like right so for raycast let's go ahead and set it up let's say create a variable we're gonna say local raycast params it is a table to let you guys know is equal to raycast params dot new right then you're gonna say raycast params we need to do two things first we need to set the filter type so it's equal to nm dot raycast there are four different types of filter now obviously I would hope with the, I would hope you guys have the common sense and critical thinking skills to be able to to deduce that since it is you know, it's you know slashed out that you should not use it. While you can use it, you should not use it. Only use either exclude or include. Right? Include. You know that means you want it. Exclude means you don't want it. So we don't want it. We're making a blacklist of sorts. So we're gonna say raycast params dot filter descendants instances equal to special brackets they're going to create a table and you're going to get all the descendants you're going to get all of the instances descendants right which pretty, pretty much simple terms that just means all of the parts of a model that you want you want to get that the ray won't uh, intersect and stuff so you may be confused but in simple terms you're going to put whatever parts you don't want the ray to like to make contact with like you want to say in a sense ignore it right so for this we would obviously want it Put our characters parts because if we're trying to use a combat attack why would we want to try why would we want to be able to damage ourselves in a sense of like if you're trying to throw a punch what we like we shouldn't be able to throw a punch and hit ourselves that doesn't really make sense so we're going to say character get you could use get children get children does work but i just prefer to go get descendants since that's just what it asks for right so just that we've set everything up now comes actually establishing the ray creating the ray itself so we're going to create a variable first we're going to say local ray 
is equal to workspace workspace raycast right so origin another word for start so start position right then our direction direction and then our raycast params now you could also um create the raycast params inside of like right there instead but i prefer doing it like this it just looks better in my opinion if you do it like that so then we have to set up an if statement right first thing first we need to say if ray you know so if the ray worked first is first of all and ray dot instance now the reason for this is because you can obviously cast a ray and they're not and not make contact with an instance like if you're just looking off into like the void and stuff and you obviously you know cast a ray it obviously isn't gonna make contact with anything so so of course you need to include that and for one last thing we need to uh confirm that it is either a player or an npc so we're going to say ray dot instance dot parent because remember we're making contact with the parts so if, if i'm making contact with another player it's not the character i'm making contact with it is one of the character's body parts their arm their leg their torso humanoid root part whatever so we're going to see dot parent right find first child right and then quotation marks humanoid boom enter then you're going to say uh not that you're gonna say ray dot instance dot parent dot humanoid dot health that's equal to like three whatever you guys want to put now obviously here we would like play you know play some type of animation a punch animation and all that and some sound effects we're not doing all that i'm just showing you guys how he's free casting right so so here's how we're gonna do it right so i do want to explain something right one thing i didn't cover that i need to that i need to cover and stuff i was gonna wait till i finished to cover this there's also kind of another thing this isn't required but i wouldn't really see why you wouldn't want to include this so let's let, we'll call this range right so you can cast a ray from the start position and it'll go in the direction you want to go in right but it won't go that far like when you set it up like here's what i mean if, if you set it up like where you like just the direction you're looking in it's not going to go that far so that's why you want to in a way increase the range so you want to say you want to multiply the direction times whatever range you want so if i say time five it's going to give it like you know an extra like five studs or actually maybe more than that i don't really know the math but yeah so you would just put times and then you just multiply it by you know whatever value you want and then obviously the bigger the number the bigger the range so if i click play right and this is also it's more reliable uh using ray casting is obviously i'm pretty sure you guys have heard it's way more reliable than using uh touch obviously since um it's you know it's easier obviously using touch and stuff because um you know touch uh touch may tr be triggered multiple times well a recast only happened once so if i do so as you can see if i press e you guys see it's damaging only once every time i do it now look let's now look, pay attention if i yeah, yeah perfect okay so if i try to do it now nothing is happening because i'm because i'm not within range i'm more than five or whatever the range is i'm more i'm i'm not within range so that's just to put it simply i'm not within range now if i do it here still nothing if i get closer still nothing closer nothing get closer nothing not and then but if i go right here the closer i get then i do damage right so that pretty much is just showing you that the range matters increases value if you want attacks to go from like you know all the way back here to over there you know what i'm saying like kind of like a gun attack you like obviously if you're using like you know with guns and bullets and stuff you'd obviously want this to be like 30 like maybe like 20 30 something like that i don't know you just mess around the numbers until you get whatever you want right so that's how you really would get a punch attack right now let's say you want to have like a part actually travel we would actually need the twin server for this so you just go up here and we would just say local ts is equal to game get service twin service we'd get the twin service right so regardless of whether or not there's an instance we're still we still want to fire the bullet so look we're gonna we would create a part right so let's say local bullet is equal to instance dot new like i said if you want to see a full video on how to make a gun go check out my full video i'm just simply making something real quick to demonstrate this to you guys so part we parent to the workspace now some things we need to do of course is bullet that anchored would be true then bullet uh that might actually be it now that i think about it i think all i have to do is yeah, I think all I actually have to do is in also can't collide, yeah. The bullet that can't collide is equal to false, right? And then what I would do is I would say 
bullet to that position. I wanted to start where my character is. When I group part is, so I was like, or actually here, sorry. I would just put the start position variable, right? Then we would need to set up a tween for it. So we would say local bullet tween. You set up a tween for it, right? Because we need to, this is called, this is how you create bullet travel. So we would put our bullet, that's our instance, then set up the tween info.new. So to calculate the duration, um, how did I, damn, how did I calculate duration? Uh, I think it was like, so to calculate duration, you do duration is equal to, um, this is another use of ray casting, by the way. Uh, even though you're not technically casting a ray, it's still, you're getting the start position, the end position. So it's just, it's just very useful. Um, so let's say, uh, I guess we'll do start position, start position minus direction, even though it's technically start position minus end position, but it doesn't matter. So if we do that and then we do, I think it's a unit or I think it's magnitude. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'm just honestly hoping for the best with this. I'm not going to hold y'all. But yeah, like I said, just go check out the full video. Go check out the video on how to make a gun if you really want to see. I really don't remember if this is how I did it or not. But anyway, we just set the easing style to like cubic. The easing direction, of course, is out. And then the property table, we're just changing the position. So position is equal to uh, direction times like, I think we did like direction times like 20. I think that would work. And then we set a bullet tween uh, play, right? So we don't need, so we don't, um, so right. Okay. So if we do it like this, right. And then we set up the tween the same way, right? We need the ray. So we actually do need the ray. Sorry. We're going to cast the ray at the same time we cast the tween, right? So this, we want the numbers to of course match. And then if, if the ray, you know, is, is good and everything probably would say like, I don't know, um, bullet tween dot completed connect function. Because obviously we're not trying to damage the player before the bullet even makes contact. So we set it up like that, right? Once the tween is, let me just, okay, I'm good. Once the tween is finished, then we want to do damage or, or like when, you know, when the bullet, you know, makes contact. Now, honestly, I'm not really sure if this will work as intended, but we're just going to hope for the best. Okay. So, oh, yeah, yeah, there, there, yeah, the direction, the direction we're going. Or no, actually, yeah, that is actually the issue. I'm not gonna hold on. That is actually the issue. <laughs> that is actually the issue with with using positions because you really got to use. That's why mouse is just generally better. Uh, let me see. Let me just move. Let me move it like this. If I can get it like that. Oh, it still doesn't work. Hmm. How strange. Um. Hmm. Let's wait. Not completed. Unless, wait, are the parts just never, wait, I wonder, or are the parts just never actually, well, now the twins are, twins are being completed, hmm, strange, well, anyway, oh, wait, oh, I just realized, never mind, I realized what I messed up, I really, it doesn't really matter, the point is, you guys now see how you can use it can incorporate tweening with rays and stuff, like I said, if you want to see how to actually make a gun system, go check out my video on how to make guns and whatnot and have a whole bunch of other attacks you guys can check on stuff if you guys enjoyed this video definitely leave like subscribe thank you for all the love and support you guys have been showing all my videos we do appreciate it and i will see you guys next week if you want like a part two of this where i show you guys more how to make more stuff just let me know in the comments and yeah see you guys in the next video thank you for watching